So a while back, I posted a Subnautica guide to help you guys overcome your fear of Subnautica. That video did pretty well and it helped a lot of people out. Now, you guys are requesting I do another video similar to it, kind of like a part 2, but better. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Everyone who plays Subnautica and Subnautica Below Zero is scared of it, from the popular YouTubers down to your average player. Maybe they're inside the hole. <laughs> it's designed to scare you. Today, I'll be showing you multiple ways you can overcome this fear in Subnautica and press forward towards the goal of completing the game. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help you guys beat Subnautica. So let's do this. Number one, know where to go, where not to go, and know the story. There are many places in Subnautica that are safe with no hostile fauna, many places that are unsafe or that you need to go to, and many places that are very unsafe and that you should never go to. I'm going to be quickly outlining which ones are which. First, the safe shallows. The safe shallows have no hostile fauna except for the stupid crash fish, so they are pretty safe to explore. There are plenty of materials, so you should explore this biome in great length. Next, the kelp forest. There are stalkers located in this biome, but there are also good materials and fragments, so it should be explored. Try to get a sea glide and you won't have to worry about the stalkers. Next, the grassy plateau. This has valuable fragments and materials, so it must be explored. Again, try and use a sea glide so you can outrun the sand sharks. The mushroom forest has no hostile fauna, but has plenty of good materials and fragments. I highly suggest you explore its biomes. Be careful, however, the biomes are located near dangerous biomes. Be sure not to stray outside its boundaries. The crash zone is the biome near the aurora, and its materials and fragments, however it houses the terrifying reaper leviathan. Avoid this area at all costs. When going to the aurora, stay at the top of the water and the reapers won't bother you. The only other reason you should ever go there is for cyclops fragments. You should do that later game with way better equipment. The crag field might have a few wrecks and some materials, but honestly there's nothing of interest there so stay away. The bulb zone you should not go to either, except for maybe at the very end of the game, but I'm not going to spoil the story. You should stay away from the mountains biome. When going to the island there as part of the story, stay at the surface of the water and you should be fine. The underwater island should be left be unless you cannot find stasis rifles, in which case you should explore. The sparse reef is one of the best biomes in the game. There are no hostile fauna anywhere. There are tons of wrecks, fragments, and important late game materials. I highly, highly suggest you explore. The blood kelp biome has an entrance to the lost river, so you should not go there unless to do that. But I personally prefer the entrance in the Grand Reef. Speaking of which, the Grand Reef is a pretty dangerous biome. It has a ghost leviathan, crab squids, and warpers. However, you must explore this area as part of the story and to get to the Lost River. I suggest you explore with caution. You should get the prawn suit and explore with it. The sea treader's path is relatively safe as well, even though the sparse reef is better. There are wrecks, caves, and materials there. But be careful of the warpers and stay away from the sea treaders. The Blood Kelp Islands are a no-go. There is nothing of interest there, so stay away. You should absolutely never go to the Dunes Biome. It is dark and murky with lots and lots of leviathans. There is nothing of interest there, so stay away. The Lost River and Lava Zones are necessary to go to even though they have many leviathans. There are ghost leviathans, crab squids, warpers, and river stalkers in the Lost River. Learn where they are and stay away. The Sea Dragons in the Lava Zone can also be avoided. I will explain how to handle all these creatures a little bit later. Also, you will be able to use these biomes I recommended you go to to find all the fragments and materials you need. Here's a list of the do-go and don't-go places one more time. Also, this isn't a must, but if you're really struggling, it might be good to know the story and where you need to go next in the story. This way, you won't stray into areas you don't have to go to. Number 2. Know what to do when you're attacked and have the right equipment. Now you're going to be attacked by hostile fauna at some point in Subnautica. Even if you stay away from the biomes I recommended you not go to, the places you have to go to to beat the game have leviathans. You cannot avoid attack, so it is good for you to know what to do when you are attacked. When attacked by hostile fauna, there are a few things you can do. I recommend using the prawn suit, stasis rifle, knife, and propulsion or repulsion cannons. The stasis rifle is my favorite as it freezes fauna, allowing you time to regain control of the situation and escape. The prawn suit also has tons of health, especially with upgrades, and can also be used to damage hostile fauna. Punching and drilling does lots of damage. Also, many fauna, when hit by a prawn suit or knife, will run away, so use that to your advantage. Also, the smaller hostile fauna have little health, so they can be easily killed. The knife will do little damage, but will cause some enemies to run. The propulsion cannon can be used to shoot objects at enemies to hurt or kill them, and maybe make them run away. Also, the repulsion cannon can be used to push enemies away from you, giving you time to escape. So really, running away and avoiding enemies is the best. Learn where the hostile fauna are located in their biomes. Get the right equipment to defend yourself as well, and know how to use it. Be prepared for attack with medkits and all the other equipment I mentioned before. Another thing you can do is pause the game when you're in a stressful situation. This allows you time to think through what you need to do and gain control. Number 3. Go into creative or watch other people beat Subnautica. 
Watching other people beat Subnautica and seeing what they do can be really helpful. Seeing how they react when they are attacked can be really good. I have a full Subnautica walkthrough playthrough. Check out the link in the description. I must warn you, the editing on the first episodes is really bad, so maybe skip that. Also, going into creative and getting used to the Leviathan and seeing that they are AI and can be fooled is good. Also, going into creative to learn where the Leviathans are and their behavior can be beneficial. I recommend doing these things. Number 4. Force yourself to go deeper. In the end, you decide if you're going to go deeper or not. Try doing these things and learning from these things, but I cannot guarantee you'll want to go deeper even after these tips. You've got to force yourself to go. Save before going down. If you get eaten or die, so what? Save, people. It's a game. Learn from what you did wrong and don't do it again. Also, the hostile fauna is AI. It can be easily avoided and controlled. It's not real, so don't get any nightmares. This game is hard but really fun. The ending is amazing. You should really experience the ending and the story on your own. I really hope you guys will go out and beat this game. It's really fun and worth it. Well, I hope I helped you guys out. If I did, consider liking the video and or subscribing to my channel. I have lots of Subnautica guides, Subnautica theory videos, gameplay videos, glitch videos, and more. Subscribing would help me out a ton. Help me reach 300 subscribers. Comment below. Did I miss any tips? Any funny or terrifying experiences? Let me know below. Check out my Discord server, Twitch, and Patreon. The links are in the description. And I will see you guys in the next video.